upstairs. Hey guys, I was getting ready to start my video for you. I'm helping out the twins. We're gonna do a reset in their room. I feel like we're just in an overwhelming place. When I send them in to clean, they can get a lot of the stuff up, but it's not clean, you know? But what I think it is, look, so you can't really tell because um, I wanna look at myself instead of you guys looking, sorry, um, I'll switch it. Okay, so what we're looking at here is tubs of stuff that's like dress up, some more stuff. There are tubs of things shoved in this corner, also a lot of laundry because it's hard to get out the closet, which where the hamper should be. Um, these drawers are broke, <laughs> are broken. Okay, that's terrible. Another box with stuff, box with stuff. We have to sort all this. Yes, this is trash and clutter, trash and clutter. But what's in there is just stuff that's stored. There's not storage in here. It's overwhelming so like you get the chaos clutter corner which i have in my room i talk about it all the time i hate that one so what we're going to do i'm going to get everybody dressed we're going to head down to florida and go to ikea it's not very far potato cat i had every intention of filming my ikea trip but i have never been to ikea before that is a wild ride i did not know what i was expecting but it wasn't that and the other thing is that our cart was the most honorary cart ever it did not want to do anything but we were so pot committed to the maze of ikea that i couldn't fathom going back through the maze just to get a new cart so it took all of my ability to wrestle that thing and pick out everything and convince my kids that it wasn't a murder trip it was just a basic trip they were really annoyed. It was like three hours round trip, just driving, and then a lot of time in Ikea. The girls loved it. They were picking out new stuff. Calvin was really bored. So we get home from Ikea and I don't do the project for several days. I just kind of get frozen and I have a hard time starting this. One, yeah, it's a big project. That's a lot of clutter to address. But two, I am kind of struggling with how I how much I feel seen by YouTube right now it's just I am really good at being vulnerable and authentic in my life it is a skill that I am very proud of I am happy to be who I am all of the time but that's with people in my day-to-day -day. that by nature is a very limited amount of people it's my friends my husband's co-workers it's people I see at the grocery store it's not all of YouTube and so I was expecting my video to, not my video I was expecting my channel to just kind of putter around and get a few eyeballs here and there and everything that I've researched says that it's kind of a slog you grind away for years even before anything big happens and that hasn't been my experience and it's such a weird thing to complain about where you're like oh you know i had a video that got a hundred thousand views i am getting a lot of new subscribers oh woe is me but honestly it made me pause and think okay can i be this vulnerable with everyone am i okay with this I think it would be easier if I was showing you guys the best part of my life. Like if I was a travel vlogger and I'm like, look at how amazing I have it. I get to go to all these beautiful places. Or if I was like a fitness influencer and I could show you how strong I was and all those things. Like if I was showing extremely positive parts of my life or even not parts of my life, if I was like a commentary channel or something, I think it would be a lot easier and I could just relish my success. But because I am showing you guys my hardest parts every time, it's, I don't know, it's hard. It's really scary. Um, like when people find out that I have a YouTube channel, they're like, what's it called? And I'm like, really, please don't. I really don't want you to, 
to think poorly of me. I don't want you to see this side of me. You know, I don't want you to know that I am struggling and that I have a hard time with things. And to just put it out there raw for everybody where so many of you guys are beautiful. And I will never get out of my comments because I find the good. I find the amazing ones, the ones that I am like, yes, I love you back. I'm so happy we can be in this together. I love those, but you, I have to go over some really hard comments during that. And so I have had to pause and think, is this for me? Can I do this? Am I that strong? And I've decided that I am. I'm going to keep going. I am going to churn out the content that I can and show my journey, which by the way, if you just find my video and you binge watch my videos, it's just nothing but a complete shit show, video after video after video. But in reality, if you space it out over time, I am doing so much better. I am cycling through my cycles faster. I am enjoying a tidier home for longer. You just don't see it as much. That being said, a lot of the stuff that I pull out of the twins room and like all of the packaging from assembling new furniture, yeah, that just kind of got thrown out into the main house because I was so focused on this and I was really thinking about my YouTube career during it that I wasn't thinking about anything else. So there is an epic whole house clean coming your way and it is not great, but it will be fantastic and I will get it done. And then we can implement other systems and get on top of it, see how well we do. I am excited for this and a little bit of me is mad because I am not flawless at this at this point, but I have to tell myself that like, listen, it's a journey and you're doing great. You're amazing. And even though you fall behind, you are still picking yourself back up and trying again. And that's what's going to get us to the finish line. Like I'm going to keep working on it and I can get there at the end. I am, I am feeling really great about the progress that I am making. I don't know. I just wanted to get that all off my chest for you all. Okay, so actually talking about the twins room, the twins room is the one room that we had never fully set up after moving. We actually had a lot of our moving boxes stuffed in their closet and it was kind of a dumping ground because they still had beds that they were primarily using upstairs. They preferred the upstairs space to their downstairs room. So it was kind of unused, kind of a catch all. And then suddenly they switched to wanting to be downstairs more rather than upstairs. And so finally, after 18 months, I decided that I am going to give them a fully set up room, give them a clean slate and a baseline, and we can move from there. Typically when I ask them, I'm like, go clean your room. They decide that that means get the stuff off, up off the floor, get their laundry done, but because there was nowhere to actually put things, they would pile everything inside these little bins because I never assembled the furniture. I bought the thing that the bins go in like a year ago and just never got around to setting it up. So they would just pile everything in their baskets and then those would become overflowed and chaotic. And like you have any idea what's at the bottom of that, that's been, you know, gathering stuff for so long, you don't know what's at the bottom. And so there was no way that they were going to get a really organized room with the lack of storage that they had. And plus I had done it for Calvin. We did a whole room refresh, reset, grow up a little bit for him. And I felt bad. I wanted to do that for the twins as well. Another beautiful thing about this is that I take the weekend to do this. It does take me a while to get it done. And um, I'm just been watching The Walking Dead and like sorting things. It was really 
perfect. My husband was tackling everything else out there. He was making all of the meals, doing the yard work, all of that stuff. And I am honing in my zombie apocalypse skills, which by the way, I'm going to be amazing at. You can say that there's not going to be a zombie apocalypse and that's fine because while you're just about to be eaten, like the mouth is just inches from your face and you're about to be chomped on and you're going to turn into a zombie, I want you to think, you know who's dominating at this? Beth. Beauty came in to say hi, but because she thinks she's a lap dog and she's not, her butt whapped the camera and knocked it right over. And then she wasn't allowed in the room after that because... She was way too much bull for this china shop. All right, first box of clutter cleaned. Really happy with that, still staying in this zone. I wanna get their nightstands cleaned off. I actually hate these nightstands. They used to be the coffee tables in our old house and they would catch so much clutter. Those bins, that's where I would throw everything. If I was like panic cleaning because somebody was coming over or I just didn't want to deal with it, I would just shove it in those bins. And so I really hate these little tables and I am hopeful that my cubicle thing is going to replace them. But for now, I have to sort through, decide to keep, throw away. Before I started this cleaning, I asked the twins, would you like to make the decisions of keep, donate, or trash? Or do you want mom to do it? Both of the girls said that they wanted me to be in charge of keep donator trash, but I suspect what they were trying to do was not go in the room and get sucked into having to do it all with me. So I think they were like, yeah, sure, throw away whatever you want as long as I don't have to be a part of it. Would love that, thanks. And they do get pulled into some of it. I realized there were a few things that it just wasn't my choice. I didn't want to do that for them, so. I make piles, I have them come in and make choices. They do have to put all of their clothes away. They're sorting the laundry. When I bring the basket out, I just drop it on the ground. They're running their laundry and putting all their laundry away. But they have chosen not to be shown in this video. So there's like one cameo of Sonia in there that she was okay with. Everything else I have removed from the video one, this is a really long video, and two, they didn't want to, and it's their call. So I do want you to know that they did participate in part of this, but I wanted to film myself doing it, I wanted to do it for them, and they're not shown in this one. It's in my birthday yet, cause I gotta say You're looking like a gift for me Wrapped up nice and neat, baby Get in my way now, don't be shy We'll be here dancing day and night Get in my groove now, don't be shy Cause I got the system, my favorite things You could be the part where it all begins You could be the first and the second and the third And the rest of it you could be one of the things I love Sunday morning breakfast with my bedroom door locked I like everything that has a cherry on top Get on my list of the things I love, love, love You could be the one I trust All the second chances there are nothing for us I like it all with the cherry on top Be one of the things I love We don't have to move so fast Baby, I will show you how you can catch my vibe And right away Time looping in the blurry lights. Get in my way now, don't be shy. We'll be here dancing day and night. Get in my groove now, don't be shy. Cause I got the system, my favorite things. You could be the part where it all begins. You could be the first and the second and the third and the rest of it. You could be one of the things. I thought maybe the little end tables could tuck in there but there isn't enough room. So I peel off the little A that I left on there after assembling it. And this is really cute. I, I like the way it looks right there. And we need to address the next part. What I need to do is I need to establish a donation bin. I pull this one out. I think that this is a donation bin that they had already started but I wanted to double check. So I'm looking through 
it does look like stuff that the twins had decided to donate and get rid of. We typically use that pink bin for donation as it was. And now I'm gonna go through the broken dresser and see if they have any clothes in there that they've outgrown. It's crazy to me, they really didn't have that many clothes that they had outgrown. They're not shooting up like they used to be. Like I remember having to change out their clothes like every 14 minutes because they would grow an inch a second. And now they're kind of slowing down and maybe they'll be my height and not like six foot like a like their dad is. They claim that they're taller than me, but I do ground them every time they have the audacity to bring that up. This dresser is so broken that the bottom of this first drawer is falling down, so it pulls the second drawer with it. And then of course, some of the faces of the drawers are coming off. And even if it wasn't, if like I could repair it, I still wouldn't want to keep this dresser because it is such a small dresser. Like it's shallow. The, the drawers are not deep at all. And they're also not very tall. Like they're not deep in either direction. So even if you fold one of the twin shirts, you can't lay it in with the collar towards the back and the belly towards the front, if that makes sense. Like you have to turn it sideways. Pants, you have to turn sideways. They're just really small drawers that are much more suited for toddler clothes or baby clothes, maybe even a preschooler, but just not grown clothes. The dresser was the main reason I wanted to go to Ikea. Sorry, that dresser, wildly broken. And it made me laugh, but it was the main reason I wanted to go to Ikea. I had done some research online and just none of the, I wasn't willing to pay the price for like a furniture store dresser. That was, I'm not getting a $600 dresser. That's crazy. One difficult thing I found about this project is that because there's nowhere really for the stuff to go, it's a lot of me moving piles to a different place, to a different place, to a different place. And like slowly but surely, I'm able to make the pile smaller each time I, I move it. But it is a lot of just me moving the pile to various places over and over again. All right, I jump off the laundry for the twins to wash and I move that and I'm gonna move this dresser all by myself. Now I know you're concerned, but look, lifting with my legs and I am able to get this dresser into the garage with no assistance. I am extraordinarily strong. I'm a strong and brave woman. Speaking of doing everything by myself, I just have to say, I'm really proud of how this turns out. I do it with absolutely no help. And the next step is for me to assemble the dresser that I bought from Ikea. It came in two boxes, which really bummed me out because it meant even more steps. And I hate, I absolutely hate when you have to assemble drawers and put them on the tracks. I am terrible at it. I absolutely suck at it. It's so hard for me to get the drawers to look like drawers and not like wonky things, but you know. You good? Yeah. What are you gonna do? Um, get rid of the coat, get a couple of things. Suck up one heart. Come back and do the other work. Oh, maybe that's meant to be. 
Oh, uh, yeah, that just one. Okay. I guess I'll assemble it. Okay. <laughs> hey. Joy. <laughs> Maybe you should find that one out. So I put together the dresser all by myself. I did not guilt trip my husband into assembling a dresser while I drank coffee and played games on my phone at all. I did a really good job. Look at those drawers. They lined up beautifully. Okay, I finally decided to tackle this corner. It is a scary corner for me. It's so much of the sorting that I need to do. I do believe I am listening to Emily D. Baker covering the Karen Reed trial. I am way behind on it, so no spoilers, but I am trying to catch up. I think it's a really interesting case. If you guys haven't heard about it, Karen Reed, you absolutely should go watch it. I like we're a cop family and I'm kind of like, I think the cops totally framed her. It's insane. Then again, I haven't seen a lot of it, so maybe I'm mistaken. By the way, we spend a lot of time buying hairbrushes, charging cords, deodorant, and guess what I never have to buy again? Any of those things. I found 100 billion of them. Sweet Potato was helping me out. She uh, wanted to be in the craft bin, I think that is. I think that's just sketching and coloring books. My kids are very artistic. They love anything craft. And so I have a lot of notebooks that they use to write stories in and draw pictures in. I have a lot of sketch pads, so many different colored pencils, markers, crayons, chalk, paint, all of that stuff. So down here, we are trying to figure out what is an upstairs craft and what is a downstairs thing. And so downstairs is going to be more for the journaling, coloring, writing, and literally all other crafts need to be done upstairs in the craft room. It's just, it's too much otherwise.
This bin was really easy. It had a lot of canvases in them that my daughter had painted or drawn on, and I hold it to the side so we can decide what she wants to hang up and what she doesn't. And I get all four of those bins cleared out. Very happy with that. Now, really all I have of things holding a bunch of clutter in, there's one more box that's kind of behind the door. And otherwise, all of the boxes that we have been storing things in are empty. Everything is out in the open for me to get through. Okay, so I'm sorting the girls' journals. There's several of them, and for the most part, they write their names on the front. Some of them I wasn't exactly sure of, but I call them down and I ask them to choose what they need to keep and what they need to, what they're willing to let go of. Sammy had quite a few that she had only drawn on the first few pages, so I'm pulling those out so that we can use the journals for later. The kids really love these. I buy them in bulk from Walmart. They're relatively cheap and they just write amazing stories and draw beautiful comics in there. So there was something blooming on this day, well, this whole weekend. And so I, I've i edited out me sneezing like four million times, but my nose itches so badly and I'm like mouth breathing. I'm trying to run that HEPA filter in the back to see if that's gonna help at all. But I am just feeling really, really, really fuzzy. Like my, my head is full and my nose is itchy. So I'm sorry I keep scratching my nose nonstop. It was really miserable. I feel so much better now. Oh, you're 
stuff away and check out for the day there's no time to waste when it's 100 degrees burns under my feet won't you have a drink with me so a lot of this is i am just trying to figure out how i want it to be organized and how i want the room layout to be and it's a lot of different things so it's taking me a lot longer because i'm not exactly sure how i envision this room i kind of came in without a really solid plan of how i wanted it to look and i'm decluttering i'm organizing i'm you know redecorating it's a lot of different things all at once and so my approach for this is i'm just kind of doing it in sections because i I need to have a place where I'm like, okay, all of Sammy's stuff. So I'm doing Sammy's side first where I can get Sammy's stuff away. And then I'm only sorting one twin stuff and organizing and decorating one other twin side. And it, so it looks really good in one zone and like really chaotic in the other zone. But you know, it works out in the end. I've never really loved these beds in this room. It makes it feel really, um, I don't know. It doesn't feel fun. It feels sterile, like an Airbnb, having the two beds and the two matching dressers and everything like that. It just doesn't feel very fun to me. So I wanted to have a little bit more personality, make it feel a little bit more youthful and fun and not just set. I don't know. I can't articulate the thought that's in my brain, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay. Also at Ikea, I bought these little organizing boards. They come, you can organize them how you want. It's just a little scog board. I think it was called. So the board, and then it has different things you can attach to it. So you can get a pencil holder, a little shelf, um, hooks or clips. And I think that's going to be a really fun way for them to display their art that they make. And it totally doesn't fit right there. And so I'm like, okay, it fits if I orient it the different way. I don't want it above their headboard. I want it to be a little bit lower because I bought pencil cups to go on it. I want to have their drawing supplies and their journals all right there where they can see it. And I feel like if it was up high above the headboard, that's not convenient. And also it doesn't look very cute. So if I orient this to the side, it will fit in that tiny little pocket right there. And I'm trying to set up everything I got for it onto the little board to see how I want it laid out. Do I discover that? It won't fit that way. It only is oriented horizontally to get the attachments to go in. And so I decide that I'm going to rotate the bed so that I can have this little board at the level that I envisioned it at. And Sweet Potato, of course, cannot be bothered. She is the princess who is going to hang out right there. She really enjoyed me cleaning this room. She was really the only one allowed in the room with me and she was thriving. Okay, so now I'm going to organize the board in like a general idea. I did show the twins afterwards that all of these pieces can be moved around and so they can set up 
their board however they feel like they want it to look. I did want to throw some things on there as an example and also to see if I liked it. I'm sorry if you guys can hear my puppy snoring. She had a very long day of doing absolutely jack shit and is exhausted from it. So she is just snoring away. Okay, so one twin gets a lamp, but the other twin gets a whole window. So I feel like that's fair. I don't hate how the nightstand and the cube thing fit right there. It's not the worst thing I've seen. Okay, and then when you face this way, you realize I still have so far to go. It was really hard not to just continuously be like, ugh, let's just give up. This part's terrible. Oh, I feel like I'm not making any progress. Let's give up. This part's terrible. That was really hard for me, this project. It's just, I really didn't know where I wanted things to go and I didn't have anywhere for them to go. And so it was just so much shuffling stuff from spot to spot to spot. Okay, so I do decide that I'm going to try to sort these clothes the girls have a lot of laundry in the living room because I'm not letting them in their room. So their laundry room is piling up. Their laundry is piling up in the living room. They have no permission to come in here and mess with me. And so I decide that I am going to pull everything out, see if there's any clothes that they've outgrown. I think it was like one pair of shorts and one shirt that they outgrew, but it was basically nothing. And then after I'm done with this, I asked the girls to come in, fold all the clothes that I just unfolded. So mean. Fold all the clothes I just unfolded, put the dresses not in the drawers, but to hang them up in their closet, which they can now access, and put all of their laundry from the living room into the drawers. So I go and I take a break and I have them do that portion for me after this. Plus, I think it's something personal where you put your clothes inside your drawers I feel like it's a decision I want to make. I want to decide which one's for pants and which one's for shirts. I make my husband make those choices too. I said, sort your own clothes out. Oh, okay. For some reason, a while ago, I decided my favorite way of being really petty and passive aggressive with my husband was I would fold his clothes and then I just pile them on his side of the bed to put away before he goes to bed and I wouldn't put it away for him. And like, that was my indication that I was super pissed. And I never told him, and I don't think he ever caught on. It was just me being like, hmm, put your own pants away. And he just like, was like, oh, thanks for doing my laundry, babe. And he never caught on. And I think we were married for like 10 years where I'm like, no, this is, I'm mad at you. This is me being pissed. I'm trying to punish you. And he was just like, I never caught that, sorry. And now sometimes I just leave it and I'm not mad, but I'm like, eh, I didn't work for years. So I guess you can just put away your own laundry. I don't know if that's cute or insane. Hmm. And your world stops spinning and you got no place to turn, yeah. And when you grasp for a glimpse and the things that you never learn, yeah. Then you take a little while. So the girls do have some dress up things. I love that about them. And I decided that I was going to go through the dress up stuff and those would also be placed upstairs. Upstairs in the built-in beds, there are drawers underneath each of the beds and that is a good place for dress up clothes, I think. And so that's where we're gonna move those. And I am 
kind of making decisions. I'm really happy with being able to sort. Now, off camera, one of my daughters is there and we're talking about, is this yours or is it your sister's? Do you want to up, do you want to keep or donate? Do you want to upstairs or downstairs? And so it was a lot of decisions for them rapidly. And eventually like I have to put everything in a pile and bring all of the kids in so we can do it all at once. That way I'm not asking the same question to each twin on separate times. It's everybody all at once. I am putting things in that little gray bin that's going to go upstairs to the craft room, which I have not been upstairs in a while. And I bet you it is breathtaking. After I do the whole house clean downstairs, that has to be somewhere that I address. I don't know if it'll do it on film because it is going to be something that all of the kids have to participate in. And I don't know if they'll be comfortable with that. And also, I bet you there will be some tears from all of us. So I don't know if I need that documented. It's still so much, but look at how so little it is. Like that pile is so much smaller now. I am really getting through it. I'm sorry if you guys can hear my notifications. I pulled myself into my room because the Rottweiler was snoring so loudly when I was doing voiceover in the living room. So I was like, okay, unacceptable. And so I came in here, Kesha snoring in here with me, but... Now my kids are texting me questions because they know they're not supposed to interrupt me. And the notification, I can't turn off the notifications on my computer. I don't know how to do that. And so even though I'm like, guys, please don't make noise. Please don't come talk to me. All of that. They're like, okay, I'll just text her. And so the stinking notifications come up and I don't know how to, to like reply to them while I am on my computer and I just... It's like, mom, are you still doing voice work? Are you still doing your voice recording? The next step is that they're going to come in to visually verify. And then when they come in to see if I'm doing my voice recording, our doors squeak. They're just squeaky doors. I, <laughs> I need to get some WD-40. But they close it as slow as humanly possible while it squeaks the entire time because they don't want to make more noise. And it's just this long, drawn-out squeak as they try to shut the door and it takes like 20 seconds and the whole time I'm like guys just just close just close it just close the door so um that's so much fun Feel so lonely now Walking through the cold streets Where you 
Dance with you, I wanted to, wanted to dance until my feet can feel the ground. Okay, I feel like that is the last of the main parts of the trash. Apparently, I emptied this box without showing you guys. I have no idea what was in it. It was a box from The Moo, so that's fun. <sighs> Shift everything over. We're gonna make Sammy's bed, which means everything has to get shifted over again. Oh, I hung up this little robe hook. We are a robe family and I love that. It's a new thing. It started during COVID and we became a robe family and it brings me great joy. Okay, so my kids picked out new comforters and throw pillows and they got to pick out their own. They were pretty inexpensive and I really discovered that here, even the inserts, because there's no tie or anything like that for the duvet insert to be attached to the duvet. It kind of just gets held into place by hopes and dreams. So we'll see how long that lasts for the girls. I hate not having my duvet cover tied in because it just kind of collapses towards the bottom and all of a sudden you have like thin sheets and a wad of comforter on the side. But it was like 15 bucks for each portion, so 30 total. One thing that is really hard for me and probably for a lot of twin parents who have identicals or like sets of same gender is the way I wish they had picked either matching or even better, like just complimentary, complimenting, whichever word is better, duvets. It would have been so much better. Wow, they are pretty different. And that's, you know, their personalities. Okay, so a while ago, I organized one of my closets, my entryway closet, and I had a lot of throw pillow inserts in that. And I was like, man, I have way too many throw pillow inserts. This is crazy. Why do I have so many? And so when I'm shopping for throw pillow covers, I'm like, oh, I'm the queen of inserts. I have 20 billion of them. There's no way I'm going to need an insert. It turns out I do not have that many and I certainly don't have them in the size of the inserts that I bought. Those are 20 by 20s. So I was kind of bummed out. And then I remember my couch when I bought it, my sectional, it came with 40,000 pillows, like a ridiculous amount of throw pillows on it. You couldn't even sit on the couch. And so I took half and put them in a, like one of those air bags, the vacuum sealing bags. And I put those up and I thought eventually we're going to be so disgusting that I'm going to wish I had new throw pillows for the couch. And so that's what I was storing it for, but they are 20 by 20. And so I just pulled those out of storing them and shoved those in the covers. And I am just dazzled by my ingenuity. Like it was brilliant. And now they're finally doing something besides just hanging out in my entryway closet. So this duvet had two pillowcases that matched and it drove me crazy because it's the same exact thing that I had for Sammy's comforter. Why didn't she have two pillowcases? And I looked everywhere. I retraced my steps because I threw these comforters into the dryer for like a steam cycle to refresh them and make them nice. And uh, I could not find them anywhere. And so eventually I'm like, I guess they didn't come with it. And I gave up and I... Uh, went to 
go in the kitchen for dinner and somehow I had been in the kitchen and dropped the pillowcases and they were on the floor in the kitchen, but that was well past. I finished this room and filmed the final results. And so you guys don't get to see her little pillows with pillowcases on it, the matching. see here's the little vacuum bag i take that pillow out and i'm like i'm gonna see something real quick i'm gonna hold this fresh as it was pillow up against what my couch looks like now and that hurt my feelings do not do not recommend It takes me a long time to try to organize Sonia's bed, like the pillows don't look great. And shortly I realize those are not the throw pillows for her bed. I actually bought different throw pillows covers and I found them. That one is a wild size. I did not read the cover, I guess. I just grabbed it and I was like, oh, sure. It's huge, but I have these big throw pillows that I had not put away in storage that I need to. And so it works really well for me. They go on my bed, but just in a different season. I still don't really know how I want my headboard covers pillows to go. I just wanted it to look nice for the girls and then they'll be able to figure out when they have it in their room, how they want to have it oriented. Here I am, assemble, I'm assembling. This is me putting that thing on the wall. Um, I do a really good job at it and I like it because I'm an independent woman. I don't, I don't need no man. So that's how I got that. That's how I got that accomplished. Look what a good job I did. These look great on the wall. I put them exactly where they needed to be and they're level and... I'm brilliant. So I have the shelf, the cup holder, you know, pen holder thing, a couple different hooks, a couple different clips. And I bought that little thing at the bottom, but I don't really know what it's for. And I can't remember how they had it set up on the display for what was holding. So I just put a diary in there and called it a day. I had them pick out their own little fake potted plants to have up on that ledge because that's how it was on display and I just thought it was incredibly adorable. Don't know 
you know what's funny is when I'm watching this back and I am doing my editing or my voiceover work, I think about what I was listening to as I was doing that part. And this, I am listening, I'm listening to like myths about ancient Egypt and stuff like that. And it was talking about how Cleopatra lives closer to us than she did in between when the pyramids were built and her life. And I've heard that fact before, but it's crazy how the historian said ancient Egypt was ancient even when Cleopatra was alive. And that's wild to me. I really, really love history. I love all the weirdness about it. I love obscure parts about it. I was learning about early humanoids and who has Neanderthal in them still and which humanoids lived when and why they went extinct and like stuff that generally I wouldn't have looked up on my own, but I, YouTube was serving me up some weird stuff and I was loving it. Also, they were talking about like, why was King Tut such a important Pharaoh and why was he so great? And the, the historian was like, he wasn't. Nobody cared about him. That's why his tomb was so remarkable because everybody forgot he existed. So they didn't think to raid his tomb. I don't know why. Like that hurt my feelings on his behalf. I was like, oh, that's so sad and mean, but like great because now we, he's our most favorite because we have the most information about what was in his tomb. But ouch, that's harsh. Oh, I'm so close to being done, you guys. I am doing the last little bits. I was thinking about putting this art up, but then I didn't know whose art was whose and where it should go. And I didn't want to ask the girls and kind of spoil the reveal. They hadn't been in the room in a little bit now. And so I really wanted to kind of keep that close to the chest. I just put them back in the box that I was storing them in and I showed it to them later and asked, you know, hey, if we want to put those up, just let me know and where they go and we'll put them up together to decorate your walls a little bit more. Sweet Potato is making biscuits. She, this is our offsite factory. Um, she likes it because it's got a window view, but it's hard. She's, we doubled the size of our factories, but we have not increased our workers because I am not paying for more biscuit makers. We have the biscuit makers we have. She's just going to have to do twice the work. I also hate that their stuffed animals do not match the theme and there's so many of them, but I remember I was the exact same way as a little girl. I had 4,000 stuffed animals and I wanted all of them on my bed all of the time. As a matter of fact, I still have my teddy and I still sleep with my teddy every single night. I'm 42. He was my literal, literal ring bear at my wedding. It was really cute. I actually bought him a tux and <laughs> had my friend's son bring him down. I still love that. It was so cute. It was so cute. And he's like in my wedding pictures with his little tux, like, and the rings sitting up in a windowsill. One of these days, I'm going to find that picture. Take a picture of my ring bear and show it to you guys. Yes, mopping. We're here, guys. We are freaking here. Let's get this mopping done. It took me the whole weekend to get all of this done. I'm really, well, and the Ikea trip that was like two weeks ago. All right, here we go. Final result. I love this. I love the new layout of the room so much. It just feels less sterile to me. It feels like a kid's room and comfortable and not like a hospital room with two beds side by side. And I do love that their individual personality comes out with their stuff. I am so happy with how this turned out. 
Thank you so much, you guys. I love you. Bye.